Good morning, everybody. If we can um, go ahead and quiet down and get seated so we can begin. We've got a very large agenda today. I want to get started. This is February 19th, 2020, uh, special magistrate hearing for the city of West Palm Beach. My name is Keith Davis. I'm the special magistrate appointed by the city to preside over today's agenda. Before we get started, if you'll please silence your cell phones uh, so they don't interrupt our proceedings, that will be appreciated. And um, just by way of general procedure, when you hear your case called, if you'll please come to the podium to my right. And uh, the way we will proceed with each case is that I will hear from the city uh, first. Uh, the city's uh, officers or other witnesses will testify. Uh, there may be photographs or other documents uh, that I will look at. You'll be able to see those on uh, the monitors. Um, once the city has concluded its presentation, you'll have an opportunity both to ask any questions of the city's witnesses and also um, if you have additional documents or photographs um, to show me or other um, testimony that you would like to give me. At that time, uh, I will take all of that once I've heard everything from both sides. In all likelihood, I will enter an order today that um, resolves the matter in one way or another. Um, so that's generally how we'll proceed. I know there was a sign-in sheet and we're going to take a number of cases out of order uh, to uh, accommodate the folks who are present. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, oh, thank you. I forgot to swear everybody in. If you're going to be speaking to me this morning on, I, I know, on any case, uh, I do need to place you under oath. I'll place everybody under oath together if you'll please stand and raise your right hand. Uh, thank you to each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony this morning and possibly this afternoon will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. You can all have a seat. Thank you for that. First case number 6123 South Olive Avenue, CE1904034, number 6. Good morning. My name is Tim Large. I'm the Chief Plumbing Inspector for the City of West Palm Beach Building Division. This property was additionally cited in, um, on April of last year for um, not having a grease interceptor in, in, uh, installed where there's food preparation and cooking operations being done. Uh, we did have um, proof of service through certified mail return receipt. The, um, the, app, uh, the owner went and uh, um, did get the permit for the interceptor. It's been issued, but to date, no inspections have been called in. Uh, since the time frame for this case has been taking so long, the city's requesting that all inspections be con conducted within 30 days or face a $150 a day fine. All right, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? All right. Yeah. Nevertheless, I do find proper notice with the certified mail and with the green card. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation of city code section um, 1003, 0.1.2 uh, and 0.3.1. Uh, we also have 105.1 and 110, all requiring building permits. Um, Given uh, the status of the case, I will accept the city's recommendation, require the inspections to be completed within 30 days. If uh, that does not occur, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Number 7, 3540 Whitehall Drive, 105, CE 191202234. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tim Large, Chief Plumbing Inspector for the City of West Palm Beach Building Division. This property was initially cited in December of uh, 2019 for uh, the installation of a walk-in bathtub and associated electrical work uh, without proper permits or inspections. Um, I have, I was in touch with the owner. He's aware of this. Apparently he contracted with a company and they never bothered to pull the permits. So um, that's where it stands at this point. Because of the nature of the work, uh, electrical being involved, the city's requesting that the um, the permits be obtained within 60 days or face a $100 a day fine. We did have the proper service through certified mail return receipt. Okay. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? All right. Uh, I do find proper notice, though, with the certified mail. 
and uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited uh, 105.1, 109.4, and 110.1. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 60 days for compliance. Uh, thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed. Thank you. Yeah. Number 15, 1470, The Point Drive, CE 191 Chris Montello, City of West Palm Beach Mechanical Inspector. Property was cited on November 16th for new AC installation without a permit. It was re-inspected on December 17th to confirm that. Um, sent certified mail, the notice of uh, violation the notice of violation, excuse me, on 124.20, and then the notice of the hearing on 127.20 was posted at the property. As of this morning, no permits were pulled. City's recommending 30 days, $50 a day. So we're still at a situation there's no permits and... Not as of this morning at about 7.30. All right, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? And, uh, I do find proper notice with the certified mail and with the posting. Um, based on testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. Um, 110.3, 105.1, and 110.1. I will accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 30 days for compliance. Uh, thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 16870, Marina Del Rey, Lane 6, CE 1912003. New air conditioning installed, it was sited on November 30th. We reinspected it on December 27th to confirm. A notice of the hearing was sent to them on January 27th. It was never picked up. However, we did post it on the property on January 27th also. Um, as of this morning, 7.30, no permit. We are also recommending for that 30 days, $50 a day. Okay. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? All right. I do find proper notice with the uh, posting uh, after the uh, certified mail. I will find the property remains in violation as cited. 110.1, uh, 105.1, and 110.3 are the code sections. I'll accept the city's recommendation. Allow an additional 30 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed. Thank you. Number 11010 9th Street, CE 20010281. Good morning. Philip Petty, City of West Palm Beach, Chief morning. Electrical Inspector. The, uh, I wrote a violation at this address at uh, 114 to 20. Uh, they had done uh, six panel change outs and a lot of rewiring. The uh, gave them a notice, red tag on the job, went back, did a posting on the job site. The, um, they actually got a permit yesterday to do the repairs, but it is rather extensive and kind of uh, so I'd be more than happy to uh, give them a 30 days to complete the job, get a final inspection, and the um, $100 a day if they don't comply. Okay. We have service and all the pictures. I don't know where the pictures are. Certified mail and postings? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? Okay. Uh, do, with the certified mail and with the posting, I do find proper notice. So this case has a permit now. It's just they have to get the work done and get it inspected and yes, final. Yes, sir. All right. But I mean, 30 days is fine. Okay. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. Um, code sections 105.1, 110.1, and 110.3. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 30 days for compliance uh, to get the work finished and the inspections uh, closed out. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number two is complied, 2715 South Olive, CE 19060244. Number three, 525 31st Street, CE 19120236. Good morning, Ken Conrad, Construction Services Department. Uh, this case is with reference to an owner, Daniel Becker. Uh, located 525 31st Street. Uh, property was cited on December 10th, 2019 uh, for renewal of permits and required inspections. It was given 20 days to comply and to date no compliance. Uh, there was service posted on January 2nd, 2020. 
2020, uh, notice of violation, and certified mail on January 31st, 2020. Uh, the certified mail was sent to 2220 North Lakeside Drive, Lake Worth, Florida, and it was returned with no, sig no owner's signature. What is that address? Uh, the 2220 North Lakeside Drive, Lake Worth, Florida. Yeah, what is, is that in the, the property appraiser or tax collector's address? Yes, that's the yes. understanding. Okay. It's the PAPA address. Okay. So to date, there's been no compliance. Uh, just to let you know, this, this property, the, the structure has been wood frame. Uh, there has been promises made to have it repaired. It's been ongoing for three years. It's just, it's a public nuisance. Um, and we do have a neighborhood association here today to represent that. Uh, so the, the building department re requires an action plan from the owner indicating construction schedule and, and dates of completion. Uh, building mechanical, electrical, plumbing permits shall be renewed and work shall commence within 30 days. All exterior work shall be completed within 45 days and that date is going to be April 3rd, 2020. And all inspections shall be required and approved. The interior work needs to be completed in a timely fashion and on a consistent basis. Uh, building department re uh, is requesting $500 a day if not completed on April 3rd, 2020. It's been sitting like this for three years? Yes, sir. Okay. We did meet with uh, Doug Harvey and I, we did meet with the uh, historical, uh, uh, with Frederick Mittner uh, in planning and zoning. Uh, it was approximately three years ago and the owner stated he was excited about making all the repairs and rebuilding it. And you know we were excited for him that, hey, we're gonna take a historic house, rebuild it and yeah. make it like new. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right. Um, okay, I will nevertheless find proper notice with the certified mail as testified to and the posting. Um, let's see. If they, they would like to speak, Your Honor. These are I'm ready to grant the city's recommendation. If you want them to have a couple minutes, we've got an awfully long agenda. I, I'm, I'm going to grant the city's request. So, but if you feel, if you want to give maybe, them a Maybe one. What, it's your case. Okay. Just, but I'm, I'm prepared to grant Please. your request now. So. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Greg Mermigus. Um, I am a resident of 31st Street. Yes, and sir. I promise not to take a lot of your time. Um, I also happen to be the president of the Old Northwood Residents Association. So I'm here on behalf of myself and some of my, re uh, my uh, co-residents, but also people that couldn't be here today. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, sir. And as you know, we have been dealing with this for over three years now. Um, not only are they, 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 disregarding the law, but they are also disregarding common decency to their neighbors. And this has had um, an effect on surrounding properties as well. So we have one directly next door, plus one diagonally across the street in similar states of disrepair. And, and it becomes um, kind of the broken window um, theory. If it doesn't get fixed, other things uh, occur as well. So we really uh, appreciate your, your um, um, standing firm to this and, and making the owner uh, live up to not only his, pro his promise to Frederick Mittner, but also to the neighbors of getting this completed, uh, restoring this, um, this um, historic home back to what it should be. We'll see if we can um, translate some of that enthusiasm into action here. We appreciate that, thank um, you. As I said, I am gonna find proper notice based on the testimony and the evidence I do find the property remains in violation of city code section 110.3. Um, we will require um, for compliance within 30 days, um, all 
any and all expired permits to be reactivated or renewed and submit a, a uh, construction action plan to the building department. Within 45 days, which is April 3rd of 2020, we will require the <coughs> exterior work to be completed, inspected, and approved by the building department. Um, we'll require interior work to proceed in good faith and a consistent basis, uh, again, under the necessary permits. I will accept the city's recommendation for uh, daily fines of $500 per day should either of those deadlines uh, not be met. Okay. Next case, number 56601 Sunset Road, CE 19050295. Say 55? 56. 56. Got it. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Atelio Belisle, plumbing inspector for the city of West Palm Beach. I originally issued a stop work order on the property on 5 7 2019. The property has a tankless water heater installed. Uh, it was installed without proper permits or inspections. And they've since had the permits issued, but no inspections have been called in. The city's requesting $50 a day if all inspections have not been called in within 60 days. 60? Yes. Okay. And how did we get notice for um, for this case? Certified. All right. You got the green card back on this? Or? Okay. Yes. Great. All right. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? I do nevertheless find proper notice with the uh, certified mail. As testified to, based on the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. Uh, city Code Sections 105.1, 109.4, uh, and um, as referenced in the Florida Building Code 107.1, I'll accept the city's recommendation to allow an additional 60 days uh, for compliance uh, to get the uh, inspections uh, completed and, and uh, the work closed out. Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed. Thank you. Thank you. Number 573049, Jim Berry Way, CE 19110301. Tilio Belial, City West Palm Beach Plumbing Inspector. I originally cited the property in uh, November 21st, 2019 for barbecue grills installed uh, without uh, permit per manufacturer's uh, ventilation requirements. The contractor has not met the proper installation requirements as of today. I'm going to uh, request for $50 a day if they have not completed their inspections within 60 days. We have received certified mail. All right, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, I will find proper notice with the uh, certified mail uh, notice. So was a permit ultimately issued? It was initially, but uh, the chief uh, recommended that we just um, put the barbecue grills underneath the existing plumbing uh, contractor's uh, responsibilities under his permit. So then, there, so under that permit, then there was an inspection and it failed the, the ventilation requirements. Yes, sir. Okay, so we have to get the ventilation requirements. Yes, sir. Yes, but there is a permit. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yes, sir. Tim Large, excuse me, Tim Large, Chief Plumbing Inspector. Just briefly, this, uh, the requirements for the ventilation are, are uh, mandated by the manufacturer's installation instructions. There's an LP tank that sits underneath this grill, and that's the whole reason for the ventilation requirements. This is a safety issue, um, so that's why we're moving forward with this, and we've been in touch with the, um, with the builder regarding this, and it's been going back and forth, and we have not seen We've seen very little progress on this. Okay. So is this like a summer kitchen kind of deal? Exactly. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Um, I do find proper notice. Uh, I do find, based on the testimony, that the property remains in violation as cited. 110.1 um, is the code section. Uh, I will accept the city's recommendation to allow an additional 60 days um, to bring this 
into compliance thereafter daily fines of $50 per day. Okay, thank you very much. Number 58, 3059, Jim Berryway, CE 1911-0304. Atelier Belisle, Plumbing Inspector, City of West Palm Beach. Initially cited the property on November 21st, 2019 for barbecue grills being installed and the manufacturer's ventilation requirements were not met. We received proper service. Uh, the contractor has not met the proper ventilation requirements. Um, requesting The city is requesting 60 uh, days to complete all required inspections and $50 a day. And it was the service certified mail? Yes. Thank you. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? It sounds strikingly similar to the previous case. Jeff Ward. Okay. Um, then I will find proper notice. I will find property remains in violation of 110.1. I'll accept the re city's recommendation to allow 60 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day. Number 59, 3069, Jim Berryway, CE 1911-0305. Atelier Belisle City, West Palm Beach Plumbing Inspector. I originally cited the property November 21st, 2019 for barbecue grills being installed without the ventilation requirements met for the manufacturer. The contractor has not met the proper ventilation requirements. The city is requesting uh, 60 days to retain all inspections, $50 per day after that. We received certified mail for the posting. Okay, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? And you did certified mail and posted the property on yes, this? Yes, sir. All right, I do find proper notice with the certified mail and the uh, posting. Um, based on the testimony, I will find the property remains in violation of City Code Section 110.1, accept the City's recommendation to allow an additional 60 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed. Number 603079, Jim Berryway, CE 1911 306. Tilly Belisle, City of West Palm Beach Plumbing Inspector. I originally cited the property November 21st, 2019. Barbecue grills installed without manufacturer's ventilation requirements. We received certified mail. The contractor has not met the proper installation requirements for the manufacturer. The city, was, the city is issuing uh, 60 days to retain all required inspections uh, and $50 after right, per day. Anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, uh, you did get certified mail return receipts. Yes. I will find proper notice. Uh, based on the evidence, I will find property remains in violation of City Code Section 110.1. I'll accept the City's recommendation to allow an additional 60 days for compliance, and thereafter daily fines of $50 per day. Thank you. Number 61, 528 32nd Street, CE 1911-0344. 528 32nd Street. Leave someone signed in for that one. It's me. Tilio Belisle, City of West Palm Beach, Plumbing Inspector. I originally cited the property on November 22nd, 2019 for work being done without a permit, interior and exterior alterations to the property. I, uh, there is two permits that have been applied for, permit number 200202223 for a fence and permit 1911160 for a fence as well. However, they're issued, they're applied for, but not issued. No other permits have been applied for. All right, so what has to be done to bring this into compliance? The property has uh, to retain all permits per Florida Building Code for plumbing, electrical building and get the fence I guess there's fence work the fence the fence are okay 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 all right what relief is the city seeking in this case uh, additional 60 days to retain all permits and fifty dollars a day after that so the 60 days is just to get the permits yes. and um, not complete the work, but get the, then the they'll work. be under the building code. Yes. All right. 
All right, let me hear from the respondent. Good morning, uh, Good sir. morning. My name is Barry Ratner, Luxury Home Consultants. Um, the owner retained my services to represent him. He's um, a, a physician that is um, currently uh, battling stage four colon cancer. So he's actually in New Jersey getting chemotherapy this week. Um, I met with him at the house. I reviewed all of the... Um, non-permitted and um, uh, all of the work that needs to be brought into conformance. Otilio and I have had several conversations. Um, yeah, 60 days, I think, should be more than adequate to get all the permits. To get the permits yeah. you can get? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We've already retained the services of an engineer, and um, uh, the owner's genuine, so he's, okay. yeah, I think we're good here. All right, then it sounds like um, everyone's in agreement on the 60 days. I certainly have no objection to that either. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me, sir? No, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anything thank else you. from the city? That's it. Thank you. All right. I will find proper notice. Respondent's representative is present. Um, based on the testimony, I do find property remains in violation of city code um, 105.1, 107.1, and 109.4. I'll accept the city's recommendation to allow an additional 60 days for compliance, which uh, means uh, obtaining all of the necessary permits to complete the work. Um, Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number 62-1401 Village Boulevard, 217-CE-2001-0198. Number 62. City of West Palm Beach, Atilio Belisle, Plumbing Inspector. I initially cited the property on January 10th, 2020. The permit 2001183 has been applied for, but not issued. The property was initially cited for interior work without permits. We obtained proper uh, service. City was uh, requesting additional 60 days to retain all inspections and uh, addition and uh, fifty dollars a day thereafter okay. service was by certified mail again yes and you got the green card back on this one yes okay uh, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent all right i do find proper service with the uh, certified mail in this case based on the testimony and the evidence i will find the property remains in violation as cited city code sections 105.1 109.4 and referencing the florida building code at 107.1 i'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 60 days to comply thereafter daily fines of 50 dollars per day will be assessed thank you number 73 4300 spruce avenue ce19110325 4300 Spruce Avenue. 73. That one's rescheduled. Excuse me, 4300 was supposed to be rescheduled. Mm -hmm. Rescheduled? Um, yes. Yeah, rescheduled 4300, yes. thank you. Um, 76 is next. 76, 710 41st Street, CE 191200069. Dan Kempa, City of West Palm, Building Inspector. <clears throat> 710 41st Street was cited for a new roof without permits on. 12 7 of 19. It was re inspected. Nothing had occurred as far as any activity on applying for permits on the 28th of January. And as to this date, nothing has been moved forward with. Um, applying for permits or obtaining permits. The city would ask for a 30 day to comply with Florida Building Code 105.1 and 110.3. If in 30 days they have not complied with the Florida Building Code articles, $100 a day fine would go into effect. Okay. So anybody here on behalf of the respondent? How do we get notice for this case? Yes. 
how did we do what was it uh, certified mail notice posted? was posted and was um, certified mail okay all right with the posting and the certified mail I will find proper notice uh, based on the evidence and testimony, I will find property remains in violation as cited um, sections 110.3 and 105.1. I will accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 30 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Number 77, 1211 Okeechobee Road, CE 19120241. Yes, this, um, this property was cited on 12-21-19 for many split air conditioners installed on the building, 14 units. Since then, nothing has occurred as far as moving forward to apply for permits or obtaining permits. And I believe the owner of the property is here to make a statement. Um, what city's recommendation? Recommendation from the city would be 30 days to comply with 105.1, 110.3, Florida Building Code, or $100 a day fine. Is compliance in the city's mind, does that mean getting the permits? Yes, it means getting the permits and the inspections. And getting the, right. the final inspection? Correct. Okay. Yep. All right, let me hear from the respondent. Good morning, sir. Hi, Eddie Schrader, property manager. Um, understand the violation, bring it into compliance. Uh, would just like to ask for 45 days as the contractor who's going to do it um, is finishing a big job, and that's what he's committed to us. So I'd okay. like to ask for 45 days. Does the city have any objection to 45 days? Um, no. I don't. So Okay. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I can do 45 days. Anything else you'd like to tell me, sir? Thank you. All right, there is proper notice. Uh, respondent's representative is present. Um, testimony and the evidence show the property remains in violation of city code sections 105.1 and 110.3. I will uh, allow an additional 45 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed uh, until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Number 781040 18th Street, CE 19120243. Yes, um, this property was cited on 12-21-19 for fence installed with no permits. Um, it was re-inspected on 123 of 2020 and no activity has occurred on the property to apply for or be issued a permit for the fence the city's recommendation would be 30 days to comply with both 105.1 florida building code 110.3 permits and inspections 30 days or 100 dollars a day fine incurred nice. All right, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? Uh, tell me how we got notice. Um, notice was, was mailed and property was posted. Certified mail? Yes. And posting. With that, I will find proper notice. Uh, based on the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited, 105.1 and 110.3. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 30 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed. 79732 Talapusa Street, CE 20010260. What? Uh, it's agenda item 79, se 732 Talapusa Street. Yeah. 732 Talapusa. This, this property came to the city as an action item, public outcry for um, work proceeding with no permits. There was a stop work order issued on 111-2020 for um, remodel 
without remodel exterior and interior without permits. Um, the, the property was re-inspected on 2-4 of 20. The city's recommendation is, <coughs> excuse me, 30 days to comply with 105.1, 110.3, Florida Building Code, or $100 per day fine be imposed. And that's for permitting and inspecting? Permitting and inspections. So is well, no, 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 let's, let, no, no, you can't. Um, um, no, permitting only. Permitting, so the work, yeah, there's. Permitting the work only, yes. Okay. And that's going to be. 105. Thing, building electrical, mechanical, and plumbing permits? Or Correct, whatever's that? needed for the interior remodel because access is denied to, has been denied to the property. Gotcha. Okay. Let me hear from respondents. Good morning. Go ahead here. I am here, sir. <clears throat> what would you like to tell me about, uh, about the property, sir? There was no job done. Could he please the, state uh, his name uh, first? Place, other oh, than uh, what is your, <clears throat> hang on. I need to know your name and, and how you're associated with the property. Samuel Gal. Okay. And I am one of the owners. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. There was no job done by us since we bought it, other than to clean it. And I hired, and I, uh, 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 you know, hired a GEC, and we already have, I mean, like, you know, plans that we did. Okay. <clears throat> to go and to ask for the, for for everything is 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 that we and I, I mean I mean I like need. When we got like a stop, war wrecking or or there, it was given by something is that we haven't done. So do yet. I understand correctly? You <clears throat> bought the property in the condition it's in right now. Is that what you're saying? All we did was only to, I mean, you know, clean to clean and to prep. We haven't done any job there yet. Okay. <clears throat> But it looks like you have some plans and you're ready to, to apply for permits. Is that, Absolutely, is that also right? Absolutely, sir. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And um, can, do you think you can get those permits within the next month? I'm going to need, a, I'm gonna need at least 45 okay. days. What is your name, sir? My name is Marco, and I represent All Day General Construction. We just had the plans. For, uh, I got involved this like three weeks ago. Okay. And I had a survey done. It took like 10 days. And I have the plans already, the permanent plans to see, you know, to, to do any corrections. And after that, I'll take it to the city for permit. But I'm going to leave a need 45 days, mm -hmm. 30 days max, to get to start doing the process. I don't because it's electrical, plumbing, air conditioning. It's right. The whole. It's it like sounds like there's a lot of permits. It's like a new so, house. I so, mean, it's 45 days. That's without the comments when the city comes back with comments. And no, I understand. And so <laughs> 45 days, you can. Yeah, uh, I mean, if I could take 60 days, it's fine. But you know, 45, I try to squeeze it in. But it's all uh, due to the city. You know how how fast they could get this thing done. Okay. The corrections too. So. Gotcha. Any objection to 45 on this one? I mean, I mean, I'd rather give 45 and not set it up for right. failure. Four, that, that would be 45 to get the permits, have permits issued or a hundred dollar a day goes into effect. That's, that's where my head is at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Good. We will agree. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you gentlemen would like to tell me? Well, one thing I want to address it, it all depends on the city, how fast they work to get all this permit. Cause I've done this a lot of times in some city, they're backed up some city, they use part-time inspectors or, or prime viewers. So it takes longer. So it all depends on you. Once I put, turn the plans in, I'll have a date that was in from that point on. It's your responsibility to get it done as quick as possible. Oh, and I, I understand that. So we're not talking about inspections with this code case. We're just talking about getting the permits oh, issued. Uh, yeah, I'm talking uh, about the plan reviews. Here's, <laughs> here's what I would tell you. If um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grant, um, I'm going to make the finding a violation, but I'm going to grant <coughs> your request for 45 days. Now, if you're getting, if it looks to you, like you're bumping up against that 45 days and you're not going to make it, I would suggest you get in touch with the code enforcement folks and ask if you, know, you can have an extension if you think that's, and then, and then, I, oh, I, I, and then I can deal with that. I'm within not, 45 days, I've had the plans already in the city and processing. Okay. Before that. Okay. Then uh, I do find proper notice in this case. I do find property remains in violation of uh, 105.1 and 110.3. I will allow the additional 45 days uh, for compliance, uh, which means to get the permits um, issued 
uh, thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. You too. Number 44, <coughs> excuse me, 390136 court, C102, number 44, CE1912072. Okay, good morning, Joe Petrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case is reference to an apartment that was issued a notice of violation uh, via certified mail and posting on January 2nd, 2020. There are holes and cracks and peeling paint uh, on the walls, water damage on the ceiling, toilets in disrepair, one doesn't flush and one leaks, and an air conditioner that is not properly working and is not being maintained. The notice of violation gave the respondent 30 days to comply by obtaining appropriate permits for those repairs that require a permit and to fix those violations that do not require a permit. Since the notice of violation was issued, I've, been spoke, I've spoken to the tenant on a few occasions who's present today to testify, um, but I have not heard from the respondent at all. Um, this apartment building has a history of uh, similar situations in other units. As of today, the property is coming to compliance with code section 18103G. The toilets have been repaired. However, the following code sections remain out of compliance. 18103C, regarding the interior walls, no repairs have been made. 18103D, the water damage remains on the ceiling. 18103I, the air conditioning unit remains in disrepair or need of replacement. The city is asking for compliance within 30 days. Compliance would, would mean a, obtaining appropriate permits for those repairs that require a permit and to fix the violations that don't, or a $100 day fine be issued. 100? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? I believe that's a property manager, right? Yeah. Do we have the respondent present for this case? 3901-36 court. This is 3901-36 court. It's okay. Uh, yes, sir. I was looking for Natalie. <laughs> uh, this is, which unit is this? There's also a case 81 for a different unit. Okay, I'm sorry, I only have, We're I was on. only expecting to, to address this one. Which one, which one is this? C-102, sir. C-102, yes, okay. Sir. I'm sorry, I didn't have that in front of me. That's why I didn't uh, respond. Okay. S sir, um, would you please state your name first? Okay, my name is Saul Ganuth. I'm the property manager uh, of the property at Piper Village. Uh, Again, I'm, since I wasn't paying that, what were the issues again? I know we have some issues over there which we had to address. Um, okay, there, and, were, there were some toilet bowls in disrepair. Correct. Those have apparently been, been right. fixed. The air conditioning unit doesn't work properly. Okay, that has not been addressed at all. There's water damage on the ceiling which haven't been addressed and holes, cracks, and peel and paint in the interior of the, of the apartment building. Okay, I do know that uh, we have uh, uh, looked at all those items. I know we sent uh, uh, our maintenance person to do that. I know we ordered some parts for what has to be done. Uh, I believe there have been attempts to repair um, <coughs> most, if not all, of those items that were, that were mentioned. Uh, and they all will be addressed and be repaired within 30 days. That will be acceptable. Okay, Ma'am, is there anything that you wanted want um, want anything that to tell me? My name is Raven Moultrie. The only issue I have is the prop, the things is not fixed. I moved in, <clears throat> excuse me. I moved in actually a couple weeks before my actual move in date, and the maintenance man they had out there, he was not, he was fixing everything, but he was half doing the work. He will paint over stuff, and he will say it's done, but it really wasn't complete. So being that he was doing that is like when he he left and. They had another maintenance man come in, and he's barely doing whatever they asked him to do. They're walking around. They're not doing anything. So it's like they need more in the, the um, they need more, they need amenities out there. They don't have no playground. My kids play in the street out there, and cars are flying by. So it's like it, kids can get hurt. It was a shooting out there just a couple, a couple weeks ago, and it pierced right through my window. So they need security, they need more, more people, they need police or somebody out there that can secure the um, property. 
Okay, and those might be discussions that you need to have with um, the folks who run the place, and a lot of most of that is not before me today. I have very limited authority to do limited things. Um, what is before me is the condition of the property itself in terms of the, uh, um, the property standard violations, and, and I will uh, enter an order regarding that. Um, but the other issues uh, are not before me, and I don't have authority to force the property owner to do anything about those. But those are definitely things that um, you, know, you should try and have discussions with the folks who own the property about and see what, what can be done. Right. Um, let me come back to the respondent. It sounded like you have acknowledged the violations and are asserting they will be cured within the next 30 days. Correct. Just to, to respond, um, as she mentioned, we have been uh, maintenance personnel challenged, if I can say that. Um, we've had literally in the last couple of months um, at least six or eight different people coming in on tryouts. And, uh, we have one person who's there kind of like on a temporary basis and then we get another permanent person. So it's not like we haven't been trying to address these. We've had people who have either come and gone or just been not competent enough to really address them properly. But we are making an effort and we will commit to get it all done within 30 days. All right. I appreciate that. Um, all right. In this case, then, I will find proper notice. Um, the uh, property owner's representative is present. Based on the, all the testimony and the evidence, I do find property remains in violation of city code section 18103C, D, and I, but has complied with G. I'll allow the additional 30 days to bring the remaining violations into compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number 8139013636 Court, B210, CE2001033, number 81. See, this is the one you are expecting, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have him sign in for you. Okay. And also, number 80, <clears throat> 390136, court A was 104, CE 2001-0328. Okay, so we're doing 80, and which one do you want to do first? 80. Okay. Good morning, Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 3901-36 Court Unit A-104 was cited on 121, excuse me, it was cited on 121-20, posted, City Hall and um, the property were posted on 122-20, <coughs> and certified mail was sent on 122.20. The property was cited for 18-103C and 18-95A. I've had contact with Eddie, who's a representative for Piper um, Ventures. The property remains in violation. Um, the city is asking for an additional 30 days or $300 per day until compliance is achieved. And this is uh, interior so repair to the interior walls and for um, the exhaust fan, like it just has duct tape on it. Okay. Let me uh, hear from the respondent. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, I, once again, I was not informed of this, but I'm certainly familiar with it. Um, we have been addressing these issues. It will be done certainly within 30 days, as I said. Okay. Anything else from the city? That's it. All right, and I do find proper notice in this case. Uh, I do find the property remains in violation of uh, 18103C and 1895A. I'll accept the recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply, and thereafter, daily fines of $300 per day. Thank you. And back to number 81390136 Court B210, CE2001033. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 390136 Court Unit B210 was cited on 121 2020. The property in City Hall were posted on 122 2020 and certified mail was sent on 122 2020. The property was cited for 18 1023, 18 103B, 18 103C, 18 103F, 18 103G. 18-103i and 18-97-1. 
I've had contact with the um, representative for the property, Eddie. Um, the property remains in violation of all code sections. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $300 per day until compliance is achieved. We have uh, window screens. All right, yes, sir. Okay, this one I was expecting. Okay. I um, actually checked yesterday. Most of the items have been already been addressed and repaired um, as of yesterday. They were working on it, uh, including yesterday. Um, one of the items we, like screens, we got the wrong size, the <coughs> correct size is coming today, so that will be done uh, by today or tomorrow. And the floor repair, uh, our floor repair guy has been out ill, but uh, we have a, a vendor who does that, and it would certainly be done within 30 days. All of these will be addressed and repaired. All right, let me go back to the city. It looks like you were out there yesterday. I was. And I saw yes. some photographs dated and yesterday. Is all there... um, as far as when I was there yesterday, all the code sections um, still remain in violation. But has, there has been some... Um, the only repair was um, to the master um, bathroom. There was a maintenance person there trying to do the repair to the toilet. But while I was there, was it was still in violation. Okay. He didn't complete okay. the repair. All right. May, may I ask what yes. time you were there? Um, 145 ish It's okay. on the picture. Because Okay. I wasn't at the property yesterday, but I contacted at the end of the day. I said, what's the status of everything? They said, and they told me, went through the list. Mm -hmm. And they said, many of these items were addressed. But I will check myself when I go to the property today. When you And when you feel like you have gotten these things um, in compliance, call for the inspection, and you know I, I would suggest not waiting until the last day. So okay. if, if there are things that the city is still looking at that are that, that they feel you're saying with all three of these, um, yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, uh, I do again find proper notice. The respondent's representative is present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that the property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow the additional 30 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $300 per day. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, sir. Number 19, 1401 Village Boulevard, 627, CE2001005. Morning, Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach Code. This property was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Certified mail was returned. Um, property was posted on 1 14 to, uh, 2020. There was an application in the system that was dated 2 12 2020 and paid for on 2 14 2020. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. Okay, let me hear from a respondent. Yes, sir. Um, Manny Gomez, a property owner. Um, I never got the certified mail, got returned. Uh, my tenant travels for work, so I, I, I got the notice like the beginning or February 12 or whatever, sometime that week. I applied and then paid the fine. And then I, I talked to Mr. Levine and we got, um, we're gonna do an inspection next week to make okay. sure everything's in compliance. So it looks like the 30 days should be enough time to get this all wrapped up. I, it, sh it should be. Okay. All right, anything else, sir? No. Anything else from the city? Yes, all right, I will find proper notice. I will find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days uh, to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $200 per day. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Next case, number 45507 Northwood Road, CE1912021. Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case in reference to a commercial property that was issued notice of violation via certified mail and posting on January 2nd, 2020 for failure to secure a building permit for tents, stages, lighting and electrical, a wooden trellis and a modified fence. Um, egress is being obstructed from the building due to excessive outdoor items being stored outside. Graffiti or a mural that was painted on the building without a permit. A portion of the building that was being used for storage without a business tax receipt or a certificate of use. And operable vehicles being stored on the property. Tents and stages put up and being used inside the property and one in the parking area without special event permits or building permits. No sidewalk cafe permit for the uh, chairs, tables, and other items on the sidewalk, and a parking lot in disre disrepair. 
The notice of violation gave the respondent 30 days to comply by obtaining appropriate permits and or removing or repairing those violations that do not require a permit. I met with the tenant to discuss the violations on the property uh, prior to the notice of violation being issued. Um, and since after the notice of violation was issued, I, I met with the, uh, the tenants, the respondent, and a contractor hired by the tenant on several occasions to discuss ways to bring um, the property compliance along with uh, legal counsel on both sides to discuss it. As of today, the following code sections have come into compliance. 18100 egress, the excessive items that have, have been removed that were blocking egress from the, from the building. 2232A and 82144, a business tax receipt and a certificate of use have been obtained <coughs> for the storage area of the permit of the building. 34102A, the inoperable vehicles have been removed or repaired. 9471C, the excessive outdoor storage has been removed. 78342E, a sidewalk cafe permit has been obtained. However, the uh, property remains out of compliance with the following code sections. Florida Building Code 105.1, failure to secure a building for a large tent. The smaller tents on the property don't need a, a building permit. Uh, the stage in the parking area, lighting and electrical, the wooden trellis and modified fence. The tenant's contractor has applied for permits for all the previous mentioned except for the electrical. He's waiting for some drawings and plans and then he's willing to, to submit for the electrical permit. Um, inspections are pending on all the other violations that require a building permit. Uh, the fence remains modified, however, uh, with no permits on that towards the back of the uh, property. Uh, regarding code section 18106J, which remains a violation, graffiti or mural, the tenant, the tenant has stated that the painting on the building is a mural, not graffiti. A permit has been applied for. I spoke to the Arts and Public Places Department. Um, inspections are pending and that's moving through the process as well. 78152, special event permit required remains a violation. There's a stage in a parking area right there um, the that the here. tenant stated that he uses for special events that remains. A building permit may also be required for that for, a, um, for an accessory structure due to the size of it. 9445E remains in violation, surfacing of the parking area. It appears the work has been done to the parking area without the permit being issued. The, the uh, property owner applied for the permit for that. The contractor is not involved with that. Um, inspections are pending on it as well. The city is asking for 30 days to comply. That would mean obtaining appropriate permits and you know, to remove items that don't require a permit that are in violation or $100 a day fine be assessed. What was the number? $100 a day. Did you say that there was a permit applied for on the parking lot resurfacing? There was. Okay, so that's imp that. Okay. So of the remaining violations, 105.1, that that's in process. They're, on the, they're waiting on some electrical plans to get that properly permitted. And the uh, mural has also been applied for. And the parking lot resurfacing permit has been applied for. Um, so the 78152, the, uh, the stage on the property that that's yeah. If, nothing's if they, going on with that at this point. That's correct, sir. If they want to have it there, and they're, the tenant explained that it's being used for special events, different outdoor activities that he has out there. If he wants to have that out there, he has to apply for a permit for it. Because of the size of it, it could be considered an accessory structure and it may require a, a building permit as well. Okay. Uh, and nothing has been applied for in that at all. Okay, gotcha. All right, let me hear from the respondents. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Stephen Wilson. I'm one of the property owners. I would just like to ask for 60 days as opposed to 30 days to move forward with this because apparently there have been some complications as far as the, um, the road resurfacing permit. Okay. Um, this is also the first time I'm hearing about the modification to the fence. I'm sure we'll convene about that later. So I would just like to ask for 60 days and no further questions. Okay. Um, city have any objection to the 60 days? Uh, no objection. I, it doesn't bother me to, to do 60 on this. No objection here, sir. All right. Um, anything else? 
No? Okay. Uh, then based on uh, the testimony and the evidence, first I do find proper notice the respondent is present. Uh, I will find property remains in violation of city code sections 105.1, 18, 106 J, 78, 152, and 94, 485E, but has complied with the other six code sections that were cited. Uh, I will uh, allow an additional 60 days uh, for the uh, work to be completed to bring everything into compliance thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, sir. And that's all we have for contested matters. <clears throat> you here for a case? Hi, I, I received a notice of stop work order on, uh, it should be number 74 in your book, 433 52nd Street. Is it on the agenda? Tab 74 is 433 52nd Street. What number? 74. I have it down as complied. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll read it into the record for you. That's fine. No. Number 74, 433, 52nd Street, CE 19110327. That case is complied. There you go. Thank you very much. Number 4945, Alamonda Road, CE 19100128. Good morning. John Frosco, West Palm Beach Code, Chronic Nuisance. This property was declared a chronic nuisance on October 9th of 2019. Um, in violation of a prior adjudicated case in actually 2005 with numerous um, housing violations including the exterior, the grounds, and pretty bad. Um, notice was posted on, on October 10th of 2019 and certified mail was sent out. From that point, um, I had a medical leave and um, Laura Balso, chronic nuisance manager, took the case over. Um, on October 25th of 2019, notice of violation, notice of hearing was sent out. In the interim of that, the owner had responded and tr attempted to uh, come up with sufficient action plans, but um, it, did not, it did not transpire. So then um, notice of hearing, notice of violation was sent out on January 23rd of 2020 and property was posted and have not received a sufficient action plan. So the city is asking to formally declare it a chronic nuisance and enter a service order to abate that junkyard and any other issue that, that um, is needed that services would be required, cutting and cleaning boarding and securing if needed. All right, and uh, we do not have a respondent. Have we gone through all the uh, respondents that were present? All right, I don't want to keep asking for every case, so at this point, no more, um, no one else has chosen to join, join the party today, so, um, but I do find proper notice with the certified mail and the posting. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will, um, clearly declare that this property is a chronic nuisance. There's been no action plan. I will um, authorize the, uh, enter a service order to authorize the city to enter the property, abate the violations, and including securing the property, clearing any overgrowth, removing trash and debris, and, and other junk, and assessing the costs. Oh. Thank you, Magistrate. Okay. I have to wait just a second. Number five is complied, 526 Clematis Street, CE 20010378. Number 84191 North Haverhill Road, 410, CE 20010124. Find Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. The property of 4191 North Haverhill Road, Unit 410 was cited on January 8th, 2020 for rental license violation, um, exterminate for pest and certificate of use. Property was posted January 9th, 2020. Certified mail was sent January 9th, 2020. 
certified mail was returned January 11th, 2020. Uh, the property has since come into compliance with the extermination for pest. The violations for rental license and certificate of use still remain. I was contacted this morning by the property owner. Um, they did submit an application for rental yesterday. Um, with that being said, city's recommending 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. All right. So all we have left is the uh, certificate of use and the rental license. Correct. Gotcha. All right. Um, I will find proper notice. I will find property remains in violation of uh, 162, 18162A and 2232A, allow the additional 30 days for compliance and thereafter daily fines of <coughs> $200 per day. Number 92223 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, number 101, CE 2001-0462. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. The business at 2223 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard was cited on January 25th for prohibited signs in city right away and prohibited signage uh, sign holders. Business was posted and a notice hand delivered on January 31st. Certified mail was sent January 27th. Certified mail was signed for January 29th. Um, I did go in and have a conversation with the manager of this said business. Um, they removed the signage and a week later put them back out with a sign holder. Um, so this seems to be an ongoing issue. So city is recommending a finding of fact on the said violations. All right, I will find proper notice with the uh, signed certified mail. I just wa I want to make sure um, the violation was the triangular shaped sign sitting in the in city's the, right away. Just because you showed a picture of a uh, person holding a sign on the sidewalk, and I didn't know if you wanted to step into that mess or not. But this is what we're talking about right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will find uh, proper notice. I will find um, that the property was in violation of 94402B. Uh, <laughs> and I, uh, but has complied, uh, so that I will enter the finding of fact for that. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. We have a neighbor uh, that wants to speak on a case, so if we can go out of order and call that case, is that okay? Sure. All right, number 96, 532 46th Street, CE 20010243, 532 46th Street. 96? Yes. Got it. Good morning, Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Code Compliance. Property at 532 46th Street was cited on 11320. Notice of violation was posted in City Hall on 113.20. Certified mail was also signed on 114.20. Property was cited for no BTR, the, the BTR expired. Um, the fence was in disrepair. They had some outdoor storage and no address characters was on the building. Um, I have spoken to the homeowner. As of yesterday, the property is still not in compliance. Um, the city is requesting an additional 10 days to come into compliance. $500 a day until compliance is achieved. This is um, also a repeat offender. And you had someone who wanted to? Yes. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Good morning, your magistrate. Angela Ogburn, Northwood Harbor board member. Uh, I'm here on behalf of several people who live on this street also. Um, this property, this past weekend, had another event, which they had a tent, no permit, on her property, and on the adjacent property, which she no longer owns, it's someone else, and there were over 18 vehicles on the property. Sorry, I don't have a printout, but if you need to see the pictures, I do have the pictures on my phone. No, that's fine, I understand. So, uh, this is a repeat property, and it is hurting the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have you been here before? You yes. I say I'm, I'm recognizing you. I'm sorry that you have to keep coming, but I but well, I, appreciate I appreciate your passion that you for your neighborhood. To us and it's made a big difference in our neighborhood. You hearing from our neighborhood. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, today was one of the persons was changing her work schedule to come today, and she was unable to yeah. come. No, like I said, I appreciate your your passion about your neighborhood. Of uh, it's made a big difference. Good. It has really made a big difference, good. thanks to the code officers. And thank great. you. Thank appreciate you. It. All right. Um, then in this case, I do find proper notice. I will find the property remains in violation as cited, given the testimony um, regarding the nature of the violations. Um, I, I will I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow 10 days for compliance, and thereafter um, daily fines of $500 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Maybe that will get someone's attention. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Number 10627 39th Street, CE 20010133. Good morning, Joseph Oliva, Chronic Nuisance Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was declared a chronic nuisance on 1-8-2020. The declaration was posted on 1-9-2020 and certified mail sent on 1-9-2020. There has been no contact with the owner nor an action plan to date. The notice of violation was posted on 1-23-2020 and certified mail sent on 1-23-2020. The property has been owned <coughs> since July of 1977. Its previous adjudications, uh, CE 18050672 on 18-2020 for um, sod yard, outdoor storage, paint the structure, gate and disrepair, trash and debris, rental license slash COU, shutters on windows, cut and clean swale, alleyway cut and clean. Uh, yesterday's inspection showed excessive overgrowth, landscape maintenance, trash and debris, gate and disrepair, swale and parkway overgrown, alleyway overgrown, uh, and structure needs paint. The city requests that the special magistrate find a pattern of nuisance activity and enter a chronic nuisance service order for the services to be provided by the city to include, but not limited to maintaining the landscape, removal of trash and debris, <laughs> trimming of any trees and hedges and access to the yard and any other abatement methods necessary to keep this property in compliance. I will find proper notice in this case with the posting in the certified mail based on uh, the testimony and the evidence. Um, I do find a pattern of nuisance activity. I will declare the property to be a chronic nuisance under a chronic nuisance service order authorizing the city to enter the property, abate the violations, including the uh, landscaping, the overgrowth, uh, removing trash and debris, trimming uh, the trees, um, securing the property as needed, and assessing the costs. Number 11, 607 57th Street, CE 20010292. Joseph Oliva, Chronic Nuisance Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was declared a chronic nuisance on 116 2020. The declaration was posted on 117 2020 and certified mail sent on 117 2020. There has been contact with the uh, representative of the property who stated they were going to send in an action plan. And they did send one in yesterday, but it wasn't, um, it had no timelines on it. It, w it's, it wasn't an acceptable action plan. And I did tell them I was going to take this to the hearing today. Uh, the notice of violation was posted on 131 2020 and certified mail sent on 23 2020. The property has been owned since August of 2019. Its previous adjudications were CE 18050672 on 18-2020 facade the yard and um, CE 19100130 expired boarding certificate, paint, repair rotten wood, exterior, trash and debris and excessive overgrowth. Um, yesterday's ex inspection showed um, excessive overgrowth, landscape maintenance, trash and debris, structure needs paints, and board, boards on the structure. The city requests that the special magistrate find a pattern of nuisance activity and enter a chronic nuisance service order for services to be provided by the city to include, but not limited, to maintaining the landscape, removal of trash and debris, trimming of any trees or hedges, and access to the yard and any other abatement me methods necessary to keep this property in compliance. All right, I do find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail. I will um, 
I'm glad to hear that. Are they trying, at least with the action plan? It Actually not. I mean, I spoke to this gentleman um, when the property was first posted, and he said he was going to do something. He never did. Then he, con he called me yesterday and emailed me an action plan, but it had no timelines on it or anything, and he just, like, waited to the last day, and um, there's fines running on the property already for um, the boards on it, and he, he knew it. I mean, and I even went over with him on the uh, property appraiser to see if he was getting the right address and all. And he goes, yeah. He goes, no, I got it. I got it. I'm like, all right. Okay. Well, cl uh, clearly I, I, I see a pattern of nuisance activity and would declare this a chronic nuisance. I will uh, enter a chronic nuisance service order authorizing the city to enter the property uh, to abate the violations, uh, the nuisance violations, maintaining the landscaping, removing the trash and debris, trimming trees and, and other uh, vegetation. Uh, debate any other violations that uh, rise to the level of a nuisance and assess those costs. Thank you. Thank you. Number 122799 Georgia Ave CE 1910436. Good morning. Um, Sonia Bin, City of West Palm Beach, Code um, Enforcement. This property was cited on January 14. The notice of violation was posted on January 21st. Certified mail was sent on January 16. This property was cited for code uh, 18106B. I have made contact with the property owner. The violation complied on February 12th after the compliance date. At this time, the city is requesting a finding effect on this property. What was the date on the notice of violation that the compliance deadline? Was January um, 28th. All right, and it came into compliance on February 12th? Yes. All right, I will find proper notice with the certified mail and the posting based on the testimony. I will find the property is now in compliance with 18106B but did not comply within the time um, required by the notice of violation, so we will uh, uh, sign a finding of fact order. Yes. Thank you. Number 13835 Alvadado, CE 20020055. Sonia Bin, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on February 4th. The notice of violation was posted on February 6th. Certified mail was sent out on February 5th. And the property was cited, cited for Code 94482A. I have not made contact with the property owner. The property is still in violation of code 94482A. The city is requesting an additional 10 days to gain compliance or $25 per day until c compliance is achieved. All right, all I have to do is move the, move the vehicle? Yes. All right. Um, I will find proper notice. Uh, I will accept the city's recommendation to allow an additional 10 days for compliance thereafter $25 per day. Number 14 is rescheduled, 381 Potter Road, CE 1908-0399. Number 17, 1401 Village Boulevard, 226, CE 2001-0051. Good morning once again, Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach Code. This property was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Certified mail was returned and notice was achieved by posting on 114 to 2020. There is an active application in the system for a license and I've had no contact with the property owner. However, um, occupancy was uh, verified by property management on site. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. Okay, we'll find proper notice. I'll find the property remains in violation as cited, and I will accept the city's recommendation for 30 days to comply, and uh, thereafter, daily fines of $200 per day. Number 181401 Village Boulevard 313, CE 20010052. This property, too, was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Certified mail was also returned, and the property was posted on 114 2020. I've had no contact with the property owner, and there isn't an active application in the system for a license. Um, occupancy was verified by property management on site. The city's requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. Okay. 
right. I will find proper notice so with the certified mail and posting. I'll find property remains in violation as cited. And I accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply and $200 per day after that. Thank you. Number 2211 Nottingham Boulevard, CE 1912010. Good morning, Code Officer Richard Pasmino for the City of West Palm Beach. <clears throat> this property was cited January, 19, uh, January 9th, 2019. Certified mail was sent January 10th, 2019. And the property was posted January 13th, 2019. This property was cited for excessive growth. Um, the trees at the rear of the property are overgrown and into the power lines. Uh, failure to comply and landscape maintenance. I have made contact with the owner of the property. He states that he has contacted uh, Florida Power and Light to trim the trees that are in the power lines. He stated that it should have been done three weeks from 1-21-20, uh, which has passed, and it, the work has not been done. Uh, this, the trees are still not trimmed, um, and I've had no contact with the owner since January 21st, 2020. Uh, the city's recommending an additional 30 days for this uh, violation to be complied or the city is asking for an order to abate the violations. Mr. Pasmino, you testified that all postings and the contact was 2019. Did you mean 2020? Oh, 2020, I'm sorry. I wrote it wrong. <clears throat> So if the city abates, or do you have the appropriate folks to, because we certainly don't want you know, people like me who don't know what yeah. they're doing, cutting down trees and power lines. I, I believe the uh, city. Death usually. <laughs> I believe the contractors are uh, okay, capable. I, just, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. My, my, my thought process as, as you were yeah. presenting the case was, well, what if FPL doesn't get to this within 30 days? Because yeah. I don't want this guy trying to. And usually they are pretty backed up. Uh, yeah. So I think 30 um, days should be enough. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll, um, I do find proper notice and clearly the property is in violation as cited. Um, I'll, I'll allow the 30 days to comply. I guess if, if the 30 days comes and goes and the city gets involved with abating, then it, would it be your intention to lien the property for the, for the cost? Yes. So, um, and so how does that work with FPL? If they come out and do it, do you have to pay them, or do they? Is that just a? Uh, he's he's a customer, so he contacts FPL, and they. Yeah. So my concern is if up, F, yeah. if he's doing everything he can and FPL is backed up, yeah. uh, I'm I'm not wanting to him to get a lien on his property because because the city stepped in. Let, I'm, I'm wondering. Um, Let's let's um, give 60 days on this before the city steps in, because I, I really want to make sure that he has every opportunity to get this taken care of. Okay. Before there's, it goes to that level, okay. um, and then I will authorize the city to abate the violation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Number 21, 1005 West Lakewood, CE 20010152. That case was complied. Number 225760 South Olive Avenue, CE 20010356. Code Officer Richard Pasmino for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited January 22nd, 2020. Certified mail was sent January 23rd, 2020, and the property was posted on February 6, 2020. This property was cited for 74-4-D-1 building materials, 74-4-D-3 construction debris, uh, 78 dash one obstructing obstruction of the right of way and 94 dash six restriction upon land use as of today um, I've had no contact with any representative for the property um, code 94 dash six for the portable toilet on the parkway at the property is complied the portable toilet was moved onto the property and as of today, the, as of yesterday, there's a photo in the, uh, the case. The right-of-way is still being blocked um, constantly with contractors parking on the sidewalk. And the debris material is not cleaned up regularly. The city is recommending 10 days for this 
property to comply with the remaining violations or the city's asking for $100 a day fine. Okay, we'll find proper notice. Uh, we'll find the property has complied with 94-6 but remains in violation of the other uh, three code sections that were cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation for 10 additional days to comply and uh, daily fines of $100 per day after that. Thank you. Number 23808 Claremore Drive, CE 19100289. Don Williams, Code Enforcement, 808 Claremont Drive, cited for 18103J, which is exterior paint, and 18106B, which is uh, overgrowth. Uh, the property was actually cited October 18, 2019, 35 mil cent uh, on November 18, 2019, and property posted January 24, 2020. Um, 18106B is compliant, which is excessive growth and uh, the paint exterior is the only remaining violation. I'm asking 30 days to comply or $50 a day thereafter. Or $50? Yes, sir. All right. I will find proper notice with the posting in the certified mail. I'll find the property remains in violation of 18103J. Uh, I'll, I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply with that code section. Thereafter, $50 per day. Uh, comply. This property has complied with 18106B. <coughs> Number 24, 1214 Lake Avenue, CE 20010025. Don Williams, Code Enforcement, 1214 Lake Drive, it was cited for 18106B, excessive growth, and 18215B, a failure to comply. Uh, the, these properly was cited January 2nd, 2020, certified mail sent January 28th, 2020, and properly posted February 7th, 2020. No contact with the owners. I'm asking 10 days or $50 a day thereafter. All right, I do find proper notice uh, with certified mail and posting I'll, based on the evidence. And testimony, find property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 10 days to comply and thereafter $50 per day until compliance is achieved. Number 25, 12, 4. That's a duplicate of 24. Um, number 26, 1815 Parker Ave, CE 20010393. Don Williams, Code Enforcement, 1815 Parker Avenue, cited for 94-485-J-1, which is parking, loading, egress, and ingress. Um, actually cited this property on January 23rd, 2020. 35 mail sent out January 23rd, 2020 and posted the property January 24th, 2020. Um, contact has been made with the property owner. Um, it was complied after the date of uh, January, I'm sorry, February 3rd. So I'm asking just for a finding of fact on this property. Okay. What was the date again in the notice of violation? February 3rd for compliance. What, that was the date to comply. What was the date in the notice? Cited, yeah, uh, January 23rd, 2020. Okay. I do find proper notice. I, I find property was in violation of 94485J1, but has complied, <coughs> but the compliance did not occur within the time specified in the notice of violation, so we will uh, sign a finding of fact order. Thank you. Thank you. Number 27, 1108 22nd Street, CE 19110354. Because you had to say hello, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. Um, this property was cited on November 26th, a property uh, was posted on December 16th. I've had no contact with the property owner. Um, the property was cited for 1813A, 1813C, 1813G, 1813I, 1816A, 1862A, and 2232A. Um, at this time, the property hasn't complied with anything, so the city is asking for an additional 30 days or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. All right. Uh, I do find <clears throat> proper notice in this case with certified mail and posting. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation to allow an additional 30 <coughs> days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $200 per day will be assessed. Excuse right. me, before we move on, could you just put into the record how you know that it's being rented? I'm sorry, I can't hear I didn't hear what you I said. I apologize. Before we move on, could the code enforcement officer please put into the record how uh, we know that it's being rented? Oh, uh, the former tenant let me in. Oh, okay. 
Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Number 28, up 1037 20th Street, CE 19120049. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on November, um, December 6th of 2019. Um, certified mail was sent out on December 10th. The property was also posted on December 16th. I've had no contact uh, with the owner. The property was cited for 1816A, 3412B, 7434A1J. 74-4C4, 94-46-2, and 94-46-3. Uh, um, at this time, the city is recommending an additional 15 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Right, I do find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail. Um, just wanted to look at the pictures real quick. All right, I do find uh, the property uh, remains in violation as cited in the notice. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 15 days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Number 29 is complied, 1358 13th Street, CE 20010141. Number 30, 1030 Lincoln Road, CE 20010216. Um, Cassandra St. Hilaire, um, Code Enforcement with City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on January 1st, 2020. Certified mail was sent out January 13th, and the property and city hall were posted January 16th. I've had no contact with the property owner. Um, the property was cited for 18106A, 18106I, 18215B, 74-483, and 74-4C5. Um, at this time, the city is asking for an additional 15 days or in order to abate due to the fact that it presents a danger to the life safety of the community. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Is there active building permits on this site? No, it's a property right next to it. They've been cited as well, but on their side, they have like a, a lot of dead vegetation. That tree that's yeah. there, it's just it's been there for months. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's that's just piling the, uh, up. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's, uh, I would cl uh, agree that that is a uh, abatement situation. Um, I will find proper notice. I will find property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 15 days to comply, and thereafter, um, the city is authorized to enter the property, abate the violations, and assess the costs. Okay. Okay. Number 315311 Lilac Court, CE 20010528. That's complied. I'm sorry. Number 32 is complied, 1346 11th Street, CE 20010363. Number 33 is complied, 1385 11th Street, CE 20010365. Number 34, 318 Douglas Ave, CE 20010370. <clears throat> Number 34, Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Property at 318 Douglas Avenue was originally cited for clean and sanitary conditions, excessive overgrowth, and outside storage. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on January 22nd of 2020, as well as posted at City Hall. All violations are still current. There has been no contact by the owner. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 15 days or $100 per day thereafter. Okay, we'll find proper notice in this case with the posting and the certified mail. Based on the evidence and the testimony, I will find the property remains in violation as cited, except the city's recommendation for an additional 15 days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you. Number 35 is complied, 1116 South Mangonia Circle, CE 20010375. Number 36 is complied, 901 South Mangonia Circle, CE 20010423. Number 37 is complied, 919 South Mangonia Circle, CE 20010426. Number 38, 715 57th Street, CE 20010175. Robert Watkins, City of West Beach Coal Compliance. This property was cited on January the 10th. Certified mail was sent January the 13th. Certified mail was returned January the 15th. City Hall was posted February the 4th. This property was cited for 94 71 C, 
34-102-A, 18-106B. There are no, <clears throat> none of the violations have been complied, all remain the 94-71C, 34-102A, 18-106B. City is requesting 30 days, over $100 per day after. I've had um, correspondence uh, this morning with the uh, owner, uh, also uh, sent me a letter of requesting um, 10 extra days, but looking at it, he's gonna need a little bit more than that, so the city's requesting 30 days, over $100 a day after. What is the um, 34102A? Uh, it's right behind the, the van that's in the driveway, and there's a truck right behind it with flat tires. The van okay. has rear flats, and there's an SUV behind it Got that it. also has a flat. Um, when I first went there, she told me that it, they were waiting on their BMW dealer to oh, I see. do something with it. Yeah, but it's... Okay, uh, I do find proper notice. I do find property remains in violation as cited. I'm going to accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 30 days to comply, and thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Number 39, 5901 Broadway, CE 20010299. City of West Palm Beach Coke Plants, Robert Watkins. This property was cited January the 16th. Certified mail was sent January 17th. Certified mail was re received January 21st. City Hall was posted February the 4th. This property was cited for 94-305-E. Remaining violations are 94-305-E. See if your question additional 20 days or $100 a day after. I spoke with the owner, the, <coughs> or the manager. He cut back, he didn't cut back enough uh, for the visibility triangle. Um, you'll see in the images for coming out of the road, the hedges are, are all blocking the... So the hedges are blocking the, the view, yeah, that's absolutely. the Absolutely, there weren't any, then they planted those and you can't see to, yeah. to turn out. Okay. All right, I do find proper notice. I do find uh, properties in violation of city code 94305E as cited. I'll allow the additional 20 days to comply. Uh, thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Number 450152nd Street, CE 20010318. City of West Palm Beach Code, Robert Watkins. This property was cited January the 17th. Certified mail was sent January 21st. Certified mail was returned January 22nd. City Hall was posted February the 4th. This property was cited for 94-71C, 94-442-C-1, 74-34-A-1-J, 18-106B. No violations have been complied with, no communication at all from the renters or the property owner. Remaining violations are 94-71C, 94-442-C-1, 74-34-A-1-SJ, 18-106B. City is requesting 30 days or $100 per day after. All right, I do find proper notice in this case. I find the property remains in violation as cited, and I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Number 41 is complied, 6,000 Pinewood, CE 20010379. Number 42, 713 52nd Street, CE 20010537. City of West Palm Beach Code, Robert Watkins. This property was cited January the 29th. Certified mail was sent January the 30th. Certified mail was returned February the 4th. City Hall was posted February the 4th. This property was cited for 94-42A, 94-71C, 34-102A, 74-34-A-1SJ, 18-215B, and 54-262. Compliant violations were 54-262, 34-102-A, 18-215B, and 94-42A. Remaining, remaining violations are 94-71C, 74-34-A-1SJ. City is requesting 30 days or $100 per day after. So the only thing left is the garbage can and the outdoor storage? Yeah, there's quite a bit of it yeah, right on there. I see. Even after they took the clothes and they didn't remove the tables and the chairs. All right, I do find proper notice. I will find property remains in violation of city code section 7434A1J and 9471C, but has complied with the other sections in the notice of violation. Um, I'm sorry, tell me again the relief that you want. Uh, 30 days or $100 per day after. 30 and 100? Yes, sir. All right, I'll, I'll accept that recommendation, allow the additional 30 days, and $100 per day after that. 
Number 436335017. City of West Palm Beach Code, Robert Watkins. This property was cited February the 3rd. Certified mail was sent February the 4th. Certified mail was returned February the 10th. City Hall was posted February the 7th. This property was cited for 18-106B and 18-106A. None of the violations are complied at the time. Remaining violations are the 18-106B, 18-106A. City is requesting 30 days or $100 per day after. All right, I do find proper notice uh, based on the evidence and testimony. I find property uh, remains in violation as cited in the notice. I'll accept the recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Number 46, 531 25th Street, CE 2001-0043. Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case in reference to a commercial property that was issued a notice of violation being a certified mail and posting on January 6th for operating a business without a business tax receipt or certificate of use. The notice of violation gave 10 days to comply by obtaining the same. Temporary banners and signs in a right of way without a special event permit for a new business opening. The notice of violation gave five days to comply by removing the signs and banners or obtaining a special event permit. Failure to secure a permit for outdoor electrical and lighting. Notice violation gave 30 days to comply by obtaining a permit or removing the lighting for not, um, the property is also cited for not having a sidewalk cafe permit for the tables, chairs, umbrellas, and sandwich sign on the sidewalk. Notice violation gave 10 days to comply by removing the items or obtaining a sidewalk cafe permit. There are also address characters missing on the building and in the alley, on, on the alleyway fence. Notice violation gave 10 days to comply by posting address characters per city ordinance specifications. Uh, prior to issuing the notice of violation, I spoke with the uh, business owner at the location to discuss <coughs> the violations. Uh, she agreed to look into ways to comply, but never contacted her office, even though she said she would. Tried to reach her by phone and by email, and then went to the business uh, to try to reach her again. And uh, the staff actually just wouldn't let, wouldn't let me inside and said uh, that she wasn't there. Um, I was also there to do a business tax receipt inspection for the uh, restaurant. And they also said that um, I was not permitted to go inside to do the inspection. A few, weeks, a few weeks later, I was contacted by the respondent. Um, when I returned his call, he said he was not prepared to talk about the property, as he, did, he didn't have the file in front of him. He agreed to call me back in a few minutes. He didn't call me back. I tried to give him a call back and didn't hear from him, and I left him a message. As of today, the property has come into compliance with code section 94402B22 and 78158. The banners have been removed. The following code sections remain out of compliance, 82-144 and 22-32A. No business tax receipt or certificate of use has been obtained. Florida Building Code 105.1, no permit has been obtained for the exterior lighting or electrical and nothing's been applied for either. Uh, no, 78-342A, no permit has been obtained for the sidewalk cafe and the items still remain. 78-6, Erector, Address characters have not been posted on the building or in the alley. The city is asking for compliance within 30 days, um, or a $100 day fine be assessed. On the business tax, they just don't have one. They never, they never got, it's not like a renewal situation. It's a, uh, no, it's, it's a brand new business and they started a process. The Department of Professional Regulation is outstanding and a code enforcement inspection is outstanding. Uh, it passed fire. It passed uh, two other departments as well, but those two, those two inspections are outstanding right so now. So the clearing the inspections and, and being able to get the receipt is what would clear the code enforcement violation for that code section? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Yes, sir, it would. All right. Uh, I do find proper notice in this case. I will find the property remains in violation as cited, except they've complied with 94402B22 and 78158A. <laughs> I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply there after daily fines of $100 per day. Number 47, 1312 Division F, CE 2001-0044. Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case in reference to a single family residence that was issued notice of violation via certified mail and posting on January 6, 2020 for failure to secure a building permit for plumbing installed. The notice of violation gave 30 days to comply by obtaining a permit uh, for board and windows. The notice of violation gave 10 days to comply to remove the boards. Exterior roof and interior walls in disrepair. The notice of violation gave 30 days to repair the roofs and walls. A bathtub and sink not draining properly. 
Uh, notice violation gave 10 days to repair the sink and bathtub. Damage light on the exterior and the stove not working. And notice violation gave 10 days to repair those items. Exterior need of painting. Notice of violation gave 30 days to comply. Trash and debris being stored on the outside of the, of the house. And a garbage can being placed um, in public view, 10 days to comply for both of those violations. <coughs> There's also graffiti on the building. Notice of violation gave 10 days to remove the graffiti. Uh, there are missing address characters on the building. Notice of violation gave 10 days to comply. And uh, the landscape is in disrepair. It's actually not existing. Notice of violation gave 30 days to restore the landscaping. After notice of violation was issued, I was contacted by the property owner who stated he was in a uh, dispute with his tenant, uh, but would work on bringing a property compliance and keep in touch with her office. Uh, since then, I haven't heard from him. And as of today, the property is, compliant, is in compliance with code section 18-100 for safe egress. The boards have been removed. And 18-106-J, the graffiti has been removed. The property remains out of compliance with code sections 105.1 for the plumbing. Um, a plumbing permit has been applied for, however, um, but inspections are pending. 18103B, the roof and exterior walls remain in disrepair. And um, I, when I went back out there yesterday, I tried to gain access inside to speak with the tenant. She wasn't home, but I haven't heard that the interior walls have been addressed or repaired. So 18103C remains in disrepair and out of compliance. 18103F, there's an exterior walkway that sort of that fell down. Um, that remains in disrepair. 18103G, uh, the bathroom and tub and sink are in the permitting process as part of the, as a part of the plumbing permit, but has not yet been, been maintained, obtained. 18103I, the exterior lights are in disrepair and I haven't heard that the stove has been repaired inside as of yet. 18103J, the building has been painted, but not in a workmanlike fashion. Basically what he did was he painted over, there's, there's parts of the roof soffit fallen down, there's holes in the exterior, he put a coat of paint on there without patching any of those or sanding anything down. It's severe damage, especially in that roof area. Uh, let's see here. 18106A, there's still trash and debris on the corner of the property and being stored outside. 7434A1J, the trash can is still being stored in public view. 78-6, there are still no address characters on the building. And 94446-2, the landscaping remains in disrepair and it's not existing, it's just sand and weeds. The city is asking for compliance within 30 days or $100 day fine be assessed. All right, I do find proper notice in this case with the certified mail and the posting. I, based on the testimony and the photographs, uh, I will find property remains in violation as cited except they complied with 18106J. Uh, I'll accept the city's recommendation for 30 days to comply with all the other violations and thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you. Number 48 is complied, 3415 North Flagler, CE 20010454. Number 49 is complied, 2417 Spruce, CE 20020044. Actually, um, number 49 has to be re-noticed. It didn't comply, but the ownership changed the last minute. It just needs to be re-noticed. Okay. okay. Number 50207 Porter Place, CE 19120152. <clears throat> Marcus Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, the address in question was originally cited in, on December 13, 2019. Uh, it was re-noticed um, on uh, February 7th. Uh, certified mail was sent out the same day, February 7, 2020. Uh, the property and city hall was also posted on February 7, 2020. Um, it was originally cited for 34-102-B, 18-265, and FBC. 1001.1. Um, I've had no contact with the owner as of yesterday. Uh, the only violation that still stands is 34-102-B. Uh, uh, the city is asking for 10 days or $100 a day fine be assessed. So that's just getting that white car? Yes, sir. Okay, everything else complied. 
All right, I do find proper notice in this case. I will find the property remains in violation of 34102B, but has complied with the other code sections cited in the notice. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 10 days to comply thereafter. Daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed. Number 51 is complied, 129 Line Art Court, CE 20010457. Number 52 is complied, 301 Heron Place, CE 20010458. Number 53, 750 Malibu Bay Drive, CE 20010460 is complied. Number 54 is complied, 5, 480 Executive Center Drive, 3C, CE 20020090. Number 54, 3618 North Shore Drive, CE 20020111. Uh, Marcus Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, this property was cited originally on February 5th, 2020. Uh, certified mail was sent out on February 6th, and the property as well as City Hall was posted on February 7th, 2020. Uh, it was originally cited for 34-102-B and 94-71-C. Um, I've had no contact with the owner, um, and as of yesterday, uh, the only a violation that remains is 34-102-B. Uh, the city's asking for a 10 days or a $100 a day fine be assessed. All right, I will find proper notice with the post posting and the certified mail. Based on the evidence and testimony, I'll find the property remains in violation of 34-102-B but has complied with 9471C. I'll allow uh, the additional 10 days for compliance thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you. <coughs> Number 63, 949 33rd Street, CE 20010146. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning. Ray Leung, City of West Palm Beach, Code Compliance, 949 33rd Street was originally cited on um, January 9th, 2020, with the notice of violation posted at the property and City Hall on 110 of 2020. Certified mail was sent on the same day, 110 of 20. This, this property was cited for 18-265, boarding certificate required, 18-106K, landscape maintenance, and 18-103G, plumbing fixture. I have made contact with the owner who complied with the 18-265, the boarding certificate. All other violations still exist. Um, the property manager did request additional time, 30 days, um, the city is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. What's the plumbing fixture violation? It's, it's leaking. There, the um, bib. Yeah, he, he, um, he has a plumber at the property as of right now, so he said another week or two it should be fixed. It's just a leak. Okay. Yeah. All right, I will find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail based on the testimony and evidence. I'll find the property remains in violation of 18103G and 18106K. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you. Number 64, 1826th Street, CE 20010148. Rayleigh Young City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance. This property was cited on 1920 with a notice of violation posted at the property and city hall on 113 of 20. Certified mail was sent same day, January 13th of 2020. This property was cited for 82-144, 94302A4, and 34102A. I have made contact with the owner who did request more time. Therefore, the city is requesting an additional 30 days to come, in, 30 days to come into compliance with 82-144, or a one-time fine of $250. All, all other violations, the city requests is 45 days or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. 45 and how much? 45 for all the violations except the 82144, 30 days. Yeah, I got um, yep. 82144 would be 30 days and uh, $250. Yeah, 45 for the 9432A4 and the 34102A. And what's the daily fine you're asking for? <coughs> um, that's $200, please. 200 Yes. Okay, that's the number I was looking for. All right, I will find proper notice with the certified mail and with the posting based on the testimony and the evidence I find property remains in violation as cited. I will allow an additional 30 days to comply with 82144 and thereafter a one-time fine of $250 will be assessed. I'll allow 45 days to comply with 34102A and 94302A4 thereafter daily fines of $200 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 65 is complied, 1068 36th Street, CE 20010186. Number 66, 826 30th Street, CE 20010275. 
Relian City West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 826 30th Street was originally cited on 114 of 20 with a notice of violation posted at the property and City Hall on 122 of, of 20. Certified mail was sent on 115 of 20. This property was cited for 18106D, 18106A, 105.1, and 9471C. I have made contact with the owner who did request more time. The city is requesting an additional 30 days um, to come into compliance for $150 per day until compliance is achieved. Okay, I'll find proper notice. I will find based on the testimony and the evidence that the property remains in violation as cited in the notice of violation. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $150 per day. Thank you. Number 67, 1038 35th Street, CE 20010305. Ray Young City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 1038 35th Street, was originally cited on 117 of 20, with the notice of violation posted at the property in City Hall on 122 of 20. Certified mail was sent um, on January 20th of 2020. This property was cited for 34102A and an inoperative vehicle. I have not made contact with the owner, and the violation still exists. The city's requesting... <coughs> The city is requesting an additional 15, 15 days to come into compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. All right, I'll find uh, proper notice with the certified mail. I will find, uh, based on the evidence, the property remains in violation of 34102A, except the city's recommendation for 15 additional days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you. Number 68, 969 32nd Street, CE 20010346. Rayleigh Young City West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 969 32nd Street was originally cited on 12120 with a notice of viola violation posted at the property and City Hall on January 22nd of 20. Certified mail was sent on the same day, January 22nd of 20. This property was cited for 34102B, 9471C, and 94482A on paved parking. I have made contact with the owner and all violations are complied, but compliance was achieved after the compliance date. Um, Special Magistrate, the city is requesting um, a finding of fact on this case. What was the date and the notice of violation that compliance was required by? It was required by 2-5 um, of 20. It was com actually complied on 2-13 of 20. Okay. Uh, I do find proper notice. I will find based on the testimony and the evidence that the property was in violation as cited, but came into compliance. Uh, but later than the date required in the notice of violation, so we'll sign a finding of fact order. Thank you. Number 69, 3000 Greenwood Ave, CE 20010347. Ray Young City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance. 3000 Greenwood Avenue was originally cited on January 21st of 2020 with the notice of violation posted at the property and City Hall on January 23rd of 20. Certified mail was sent on same day, January 23rd of 20. This property was cited for 34102A, <coughs> the inoperative vehicle, and 94-71C, outdoor storage. I have not made contact with the owner, and all violations <coughs> still exist. The city is requesting an additional 15 days to come into compliance, or $150 per day until compliance is achieved. All right, thank you. I do find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail. Based on the evidence and the testimony, I find property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 15 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed till compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 70 is complied, 3511 Village Boulevard, 205 CE 19060146. Number 71 is complied, 1574 6th Street, CE 19100228. Number 72 is complied, 415 49th Street, CE 19100443. Number 73 is rescheduled, 4300 Spruce Ave, CE 19110325. Number 75 is complied, 5801 North Flagler Drive, CE 19120030. Number 82 is complied, 3810 Australian Court, CE 20010381. Number 83 is complied, 3916 Australian Court, CE 20010384 is complied. And number 84, 3940 Australian Court, CE 20010385. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 3940 Australian Court was cited on 12320. The property and city hall were posted on 12920 and certified mail was sent on 12320. The property was cited for 18-103B. I've had contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 90 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. 
All right, I will find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find property remains in violation of 18103B. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 90 days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Number 85-955-44th Street, CE 20010387. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 955 44th Street was cited on 12320. The property in City Hall were posted on 12920 and certified mail was sent on 12320. The property was cited for 34-102B, 74-34-A1J. The property has since complied with 74-34-A1J. The property still remains in violation of 34-102B. I've had no contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 10 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. All right, so complied with the garbage can placement, the inoperative vehicle is still there. Correct. Got it, okay. Uh, we'll find proper notice. Uh, well, based on the evidence and testimony, find the property remains in violation of city code 34102B, but complied with 7434A1J. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 10 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed. Number 86 is complied, 841 44th Street, CE 20010392. Number 87 is complied, 811 44th Street, CE 20. CE 20010400, number 88, 956-43rd Street, CE 20010409. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 956-43rd Street was cited on 12320. The property and city hall were posted on 12920 and certified mail was sent on 12420. The property was cited for 74-4-B and 34-102B. The property has since complied with 74-4-B. The property still remains in violation of 34-102B. The city is asking for an additional 10 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Thank you. I do find proper notice with the posting in the certified mail. Based on testimony and evidence, I find property remains in violation of city code section 34-102B, but has complied with 74-4-B. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 10 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Number 89 is complied, 809 42nd Street, CE 20010413. Number 90, 830 37th Street, CE 20010414. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 830 37th Street was cited on 12320. The property and city hall were posted on 12920 and certified mail was sent on 12420. The property was cited for 18 106M. 34-102B, 74-34-A1J. The property has since complied with 34-102-B. The property remains in violation of all other code <coughs> sections. I've had contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 15 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. All right, I do find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation of city code section 18106M, complied with 34102B. Um, tell me about the garbage can placement. I didn't see a picture of that yet. So. It's still um, sitting on the street in front of the house. Okay, there you right go. There. Uh, we'll find that uh, that is a remains in violation as well. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 15 days to comply thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Number 91 is complied, 4200 Greenwood, CE 20010416. Number 92 is complied, 4116 Greenwood, CE 20010417. Number 93 is complied, 932 39th Street, CE 20010422. Number 94 is complied, 961 39th Street, CE 20010424. <clears throat> Number 95 is complied, 6284th Street, CE 20010036. <coughs> Number 97 is complied, 64337th Street, CE 20010263. Number 98 is complied, 738th, CE 20010265. Number 99 is complied, 62347th Street, CE 20010269. <coughs> Number 100 is complied, 523 41st Street, CE 20010270. Number 101 is complied, 611 36th Street, CE 20010434. Um, number 102, 617 36th Street, CE 20010438. Good morning, Christopher <laughs> Thompson, City of West Palm Co Compliance. 
Property at 617 36th Street was cited on 12420. Notes of violation was posted at City Hall on 127, <laughs> 2020. Certified mail was sent on 127, 2020. Property was cited for safe egress, trash can placement. Um, as of yesterday, I have not made contact with the homeowner and the property is still in not in compliance. City is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Okay. Uh, thank you. I do find proper notice with the certified mail and the posting. I do find property remains in violation of 18-100 um, and 7434A1J. Uh, I will uh, accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Number 103 is complied, 615 38th Street, CE 20010483. Number 104 is complied, 414 47th Street, CE 20010520. Number 105 is complied, 510 38th Street, CE 20010523. Number 106, 621 40th Street, CE 20010530. Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Co Compliance. Property at 621 40th Street was cited on 129 2020. Notice of violation was posted at City Hall on 129 2020 and certified mail was also sent on 129 2020. Property was cited for trash can placement, inoperable vehicle, safe egress, and outdoor storage. As of yesterday, I have not made contact <coughs> with the homeowner and the property is still not in compliance. So it is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Is the that vehicle the abandoned one? Yes. Is, uh, what's going on with it? Is it not no registered? No tag is not registered. It's just been sitting there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I do find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail. I find property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Number 107 is complied, 635 40th Street, CE 20010533. Number 108 is complied, 515 39th Street, CE 20010565. Number 109 is complied, 415 47th Street, CE 20010568. Number 110 is complied, 7030 40th Street, CE 20020011. Number 11, 111 is complied, 715 40th Street, CE 20020012. Number 112-4701 Pinewood Ave, CE 20020013. Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Code Compliance. Property at 4701 Pinewood was cited on 2-3-2020. Notice of violation was posted at City Hall on 2-5-2020. Certified mail was sent on 2-5-2020. Property was cited for a trash can placement, inoperable vehicle, and swell cleaning. Um, as of yesterday, I have not made contact with a homeowner. Property is still not in compliance. The city is requesting additional 30 days to come into compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Got that. Um, all right, I will find proper notice based on the evidence. I will find property remains in violation. Uh, where's the garbage can placement? I don't see it. I didn't see that. You'll see. There you go. Remains in violation as cited in the notice. I'll accept the city's recommendation for the additional 30 days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you. Number 113 is complied, 717 43rd Street, CE 20020119. Number 114 is complied, 717 41st Street, CE 20020121. And that completes the first part of our agenda. I gotta tell you, I thought we were gonna be here till I know, you right? know, well, midnight. You sh I say she talked. <laughs> you talked more than I did today, yeah, right. and and I, I, that's got to be a record ripping. My throat is hurting listening to this. <laughs> I know. It 114 hurt. cases, and we're already through them. All right. Are we ready to roll into? Um, yeah, they're here. I think we only have two parties here so far. Who was here first? <laughs> I said, who was here first? Well, the two gentlemen. All right. That's for. We're happy to do those two now. Yeah, let's go ahead and um, I'll just swear everybody in as they come up. So number three, forty twenty one San Marino Boulevard, unit two zero seven, CE one eight zero seven zero zero eight seven. Okay. 
All right, so I'll hear from the city. We'll make a presentation, <coughs> then I'll place you under oath, and I'll hear from um, you, and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, do it that way. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, did you already swear them in? No, go ahead. I'll swear okay. them in when I get over there. Mitch Posner, Code Enforcement. Case ending in 0874021 San Marino Boulevard, number 207. Date ordered 95 of 18, fine started 106 of 18, 391 days. Total 78,200, $200 a day, date of compliance 11 1 of 19. Um, same owner case was for no rental license. Uh, the only mitigation factor is the owner didn't know because he's from out of the country, but notice was sent to the Florida address listed with the county at their time. Entirely their responsibility. City's asking for 30%. going to be testifying gentlemen or uh, just you uh, yes I'm going to be doing the majority of the speaking because he does not speak good English all right let me uh, go ahead and place you under oath raise your hand do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth yes sir thank you go ahead and tell me your name and address my name is Eric Martinez and uh, I am on behalf of a business would you like my personal address no tell me how you're related to the property um, I am um, here as a liaison for the uh, property owner. He asked me to to speak on his behalf because of his English, and uh, and asked for representation. And who's the principal for Alta Ale Investment LLC? That would be this gentleman here, Emilio Poitiving. Okay, and you're here on his behalf. Yes, sir. To try and bridge the language barrier yes all right why don't you go ahead and tell me what's going on with this then okay so my uh my client here emilio poitivin he um he is a how can you say this a an amateur investor this is his first property he just purchased and it is his second property that he owns. Um, his other home or his other property he owns is his primary residence. So he only has this one investment property he purchased. And this property was purchased um, with the intention of you know, providing a, a, a rental income for him and he uh, trusted his broker uh, and he's already been through two other brokers and now he's on his third um, the addresses that were placed in the Sunbiz and in the property appraiser are the addresses of those brokers those brokers were not notify him notifying him of any of these violations he later found out after his third broker that was in the picture um, and still in the picture uh, decided that this was not going to be a good uh, investment property for him because at this time he's not earning any income and he spent a very uh, good amount of time without even renting it uh, after the purchase. So that broker decided that he was going to list the property for sale and find him a different investment property that can turn a profit for him. Uh, during that time, uh, the uh, municipal lien search came back and the, um, the buyers as well as him were notified and the broker that there was a lien on the property. And this is where it all uh, shed light for him. But up until then, he did not actually know that there was a problem with the property because two brokers prior to that were not um, informing him of these violations. Um, this gentleman here is, from the time that I've met him and known him, he's, 
he has no ill will or, you know, he doesn't, he's not trying to cause a nuisance to, to anyone, nor to the tenants or to himself. And he's willing and able to attend to those matters. And, and, and during that time when he did find, find out, uh, it took him less than 30 days okay. to make contact with the, the city, uh, pay the rental uh, agreement um, an inspection fee that needs to be done for, for having a rental license. And those inspections were scheduled immediately. Not, not, not at one time did, did he even you know, try to not have the city involved. He granted them access. He put all these things together and uh, made the repairs as necessary because of the uh, inspection and brought the home into compliance <laughs> in, in a reasonable time all on his own, you know, just sifting through the whole thing. Because at that time, he didn't, he didn't really have anyone's help. The, per, the broker who told him about this is, uh, you know, not involved in those, 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 those scenarios. So he was left out for him to do this on his own, and he did it. And um, after that, uh, he, he met, he met a, a person that referred him to me because I, I have some knowledge of, you know, you know, building departments and code violations, and uh, that's why I'm here. Yes, sir. He would like to speak. Yeah, come up to the microphone. Come. If, if you have trouble understanding anything, just let me know. And okay. uh, good morning, good morning, Senor Juez. Uh, I'm sorry, I speak a little English. I'm from Argentina. I made an uh, investment here because <laughs> I try, I trust in our, uh, in, in a friend from, uh, get on, uh, the bro broker, mm -hmm. uh, El Mengaño. He was deceived. Is there a, so are you kind of acting in that role as the local representative for this property now, or does he have a, a better broker at this point? I am not the broker. I'm not a real estate professional. Um, he does have a better broker now, uh, for, and that's the person that's trying to list a property and get him out of this bind because at this time he's, he's bleeding financially okay. uh, a lot. I speak Spanish because, but he translates. Re, uh, realmente nunca quise faltar a los pagos, o sea, he never, his, it was never his intention to um, be behind on any of the city payments and rental. Um, I think I understand. Okay. I, I, I understand. Um, can the city ask a question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I just, your statement that he's bleeding financially other than the lien, I, I didn't hear anything else really in there. His... His rental property is not producing for him. Oh, okay. I got you. Lamentablemente fueron dos brokers con los cuales tuve problema y no me informaron. El tercer broker fue el que me dijo, tienes que ir acá y resolver la situación. Por eso desde, desde el mes pasado, de hace unos meses, estoy atrás de todos los Los papeles, y ahora me hago cargo yo de las cosas. Uh, this is more of a reiteration of what I told you earlier, um, but he did have two brokers uh, prior to this third broker, and since he's found out of the issue, he has been after all paperwork and, and is, is being responsible about making sure that, that he's in compliance. Okay. Uh, Como dije, no es mi intención eh, haber faltado a los pagos y así he hecho todos los pagos que me han solicitado acá en la ciudad y pretendo seguir cumpliendo con todas las leyes de West Palm Beach. As, as was mentioned earlier, it's not his intention to be late on any payments um, and any of the compliance rules and he would like to work with West Palm Beach and do what what is necessary to okay to be whole with you guys. I, 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 thank you very much. 
Anything else from the city on this one? Uh, the, the city does not intimate any ill will in any way whatsoever. He's not a serial violator. It's whether it's through ignorance or trusting the wrong property managers. <laughs> it's an owner cause violation. Our standard ask in that kind of scenario is 30%. Okay. Um, so uh, given everything I heard, you know, it's a rental license, um, the lien accrued at 78,200, the city's recommending basically 23,400 as the, the maximum reduction. Um, given everything I've heard, I, I, I'm gonna reduce this to $4,000. Um, how long does he need to pay that? He's very appreciative of the, uh, the reduction, and uh, he asked that not only do you allow him to um, allow him to make this payment up until March 30th, um, he is paying his property taxes at this moment, and he does ask that if you could uh, come down to 3,500. Um, I'm not going to come down, <coughs> but I, I can give I can give I'll give him as much as six months to pay it. So, okay. I think you guys are um, very helping. Thank you so much. And he accepts your offer. Six Four, months. Four thousand dollars. No later than six months. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And may I approach? All right. And these are all, all the instructions and where he can pay? Yes, in the bottom of the order. Perfect. Six months, 180 days. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much Thanks. for your Good time, luck. gentlemen. Number 51401 Village Boulevard, 417 CE1905-0503. Good morning. <clears throat> Go ahead. Case ending in 503-1401 Village, number 417. Date ordered 717 of 19, fine started 819 of 19, ran for 70 days, total $14,000. $200 sorry, a day, uh, date of compliance, 1028 of 19. Previous owner is the applicant, um, but is also the violator. The case itself was only complied because they sold the property, which they owned for seven years and rented out all that time without a rental license. Um, property many, was sold for... How yes, many sir? days was it in violation? I, I, that, 70. I, I, seven 70 days, violation. and it was complied by selling the property for $95,000, owned for seven years with no rental license. Uh, city is asking for 50% of the 14,000. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm representing uh, the owners, the previous owner of this uh, property. And what is your name, sir? Jose Tesone. Okay, and... Um, oh, I need to place you under oath. Let me go ahead and swear you yes, in. Sir. You swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Sir. All right, now go ahead and state your name and address for me. It's uh, Jose Tesone, and the address is 3069 North Palmer Drive, Pompano Beach, Florida, uh, 33069. And how are you related to Sun Park Avenue, LLC? Am I willing? Sorry? 
So the owner is Sun Park Avenue LLC. Yes, How exactly. are you associated with that? Um, I am the. I was the property manager for for the the unit. That's uh, okay. For the for the prior owner. For, exactly. Gotcha. All right. Go ahead. Well, we found out about the uh, violation uh, when the uh, title company asked for you know a clear title, and this lien appeared. And um, then uh, we find, found out that the uh, uh, notice was sent over to a prior address that uh, this company was registered with. <clears throat> and um, I, I didn't know exactly why it didn't have, uh, they didn't you know, uh, change it to the new one um, up until that moment. And the, uh, we solved the problem. I mean, we uh, immediately uh, came to the city, paid the, the, the fee at the moment for the rental license, and um, the inspection was approved. So the actual closing went on and, and closed. And um, then we applied for, you know, uh, it was, nobody had uh, no ill intentions doing this. Absolutely not. This, People are from Italy, and they don't want to mess with anything here. And they keep, you know, everything on time, but this one, but this uh, issue. So um, we applied uh, through the city to have, uh, you know, this uh, reduced as much as possible because honestly, they 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 didn't, they didn't know, and we acted like. <laughs> like flash to, to solve it. Okay, all right, thank you, sir. Anything else from the city on this one? No, sir. All right, um, I'm gonna reduce this one to uh, $2,000. Can you pay that within 30 days? Okay. 30 days, thank you. Case number 1914 8th Street, CE 1510265. Let me go ahead and swear you in so I don't forget. Uh, you swear from under penalties of perjury, your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Go ahead and state your name and address, please. Aaron Margolit. The property address is 914 8th Street. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Let me go ahead and hear from uh, the city real quick. Case ending in 265, 914 8th Street, date order 12-2 of 15, fine started 1-4 of 16, ran for 928 days. Total 92,800, $100 a day, date of compliance 720 of 18. New owner, which is the only mitigating factor that they listed on their application. Uh, however, once they purchased it, they rented it without a license until this month when they finally got it to qualify for this lien reduction hearing for a total of 15 months. Uh, additionally, their application predates the code change that ties in additional LLC properties, uh, but they do own another property at 2009 Division, um, which is currently cited for a number of violations. Um, city's asking for 30%. Did you say new owner or same owner? <coughs> to a new owner, that's their mitigating factor. Okay. Yeah, the I, mitigating, I thought I heard, but I wanted yeah. to. The mitigating factor, new owner, as we moved to correct the violations immediately as we purchased it. And the 2009 division is a separate um, owner. Um, I do have ownership in that, but it's completely separate and I'm unaware of any violations on that property. So tell me what you did when you acquired the property. Uh, we remodeled it with the required permits. Uh, we went through the, all the hoops that the building department required us to go through. Apparently the building was historic and uh, nobody advised us of that. They wanted us to restore some of the windows to previous um, condition. Uh, we did everything that the building department required us to do. And when they told us to obtain the rental license, we did it as well, so you know. What kind of, what was the investment to bring the property to? It was quite substantial. Complete electrical, um, AC had to be redone, the interior and um, exterior, a lot of work was involved. This was, un nobody lived in that property for decades probably. 
Is it um, now a rental property? Is that yes. what you're doing with it? Okay. Apparently the code officer, the new code officer advised me there is some sort of a grant money that we could apply for. I haven't heard of it before. Um, historic gave me the um, Okay. Story gave me the reference for those to apply I'm, for the I'm grant. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. What was your recommendation on this one again? I, uh, the city's asking for 30%. 30. They okay. rented all that time without a license. And again, they have the other property that the LLC is tied into that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven violations that it was cited for in the last month. Not separate notices, all in the same notice. Right. I was not aware of any new violations the last month. Uh, first I'm hearing about it is now. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me, sir? Um, we move to correct those violations immediately. You know, we don't play around and we appreciate whatever the city could do for us. And those violations are the first time I heard of them. I never was notified, no by mail, no by phone. So I'm gonna actually go to um, Mr. Mitchell now and see exactly what uh, needs to be done in order to correct those uh, new violations. Okay, nine, yeah. All right, so this lien accrued to $92,800. Uh, the city's recommendation is be reduced to no more than $27,800, but uh, given, and I understand, um, comments that the city has made, um, given the fact we have a new owner who did bring this thing back around. Um, I'm gonna reduce this to $5,000. How long will it take you to pay that? Well, uh, is there any way we can pay less? Would be my I question. think 5,000 is the appropriate number, but I, I'm very flexible on <coughs> how long uh, it takes. Well, we don't need much time to pay those, but uh, I, you know, I honestly feel we move to correct those violations immediately upon purchase. You know what I mean? I um, honestly feel a thousand or two thousand dollars is a fair amount of money. Okay, I, so, I appreciate I mean, that. I, I don't know. I'm being penalized here eventually for the neglect of the previous owner. I, you know. I had nothing to do with uh, uh, any of those violations. None of the properties. So I'm reducing a $92,000 lien to $5,000. I'm asking you how much time you need. I'm happy to go the other direction because I, I, I've told you what I think the appropriate number is. And I appreciate the fact that you think that that's still unreasonable. Uh, yes. I don't. And since I'm the one making the decision, I, I'll just say 30 days unless you tell me you need more time. I don't need more time, no. I'll do, is 90 days sufficient? I mean, tell me I'll go up to six months. I'm yeah, happy to I, do that, but... I need 24 hours. All right, 30 days. Thank you. Sir, here's a copy of your order. Number 2610 Clamata Street, 636, CE 18030470. Wrong time. Good morning. Good morning. Let me go ahead and uh, swear you in, sir, so I don't forget when we get around to uh, hearing from you. Do you swear or affirm it or penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Sorry. Case ending at 470610 Clematis, number 636. Date ordered 418 of 18, fine started 428 of 18. Ran for 327 days, total 32,700. $100 a day, date of compliance 321 of 19, same owner. Um, their mitigating factor is they didn't receive the notice, but the PAPA address is still the same now as the notice was sent to in 2018 when the case was open. Um, they own a total of three properties. Between all three of these, they've been cited five times for not renewing their re rental license. The city's asking for 50%. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. 
Uh, my name is Angel Santos. I'm here representing Optimus Management and property manager for the property. Uh, the owner of the property is a, a foreign investor. He does not reside in the country. We became managers last year. We did not find out about any of these, uh, the, the violation until the property was sold and we were told by the title company that, that was, uh, there was a lien. <coughs> That's the first time we heard about it. There's an address located in Boynton Beach, which I have no idea, we have no idea how that got there. Uh, the owner may be, may, may be an old address from an old management company or um, some other explanation for that. But uh, we were not aware until that lien came up uh, during title search. We tried to uh, remedy the situation. Since we've had the property, we have paid the, the fees on time and this was not an intentional, in any way, an intentional, uh, uh, you know, we're not. The address that was sent to is that the uh, Sunbiz or the property appraiser or what? Property appraiser address. Okay. So, yeah, and that's the address by law that the city has to use is the address that the property appraiser or tax collector have on file. So if that's not updated unless uh, the property owner keeps that current. I, I understand that. I, I spoke to Mr. Posner. He had told me about the address, the difference in the address, and I've, I've contacted the owner, and we will make changes to make sure that they're, they're properly uh, addressed. Okay. Anything else from the city on this one? Uh, the city understands that this property manager isn't responsible, but it's still the owner's responsibility for the previous property managers. And as you know, time and again, we're here before you because they don't have proper property management. That's on them, it's not on the city. All right. Um, if I may, I, yes. the owner is a foreign uh, national. He, he doesn't reside in the United States. He doesn't have any idea what the process is here. He buys a property through professional people and he's hired professional management companies to handle it. It's not something that he's doing on himself. No, I understand. Uh, he's relying on people that, that, that supposedly know the law and know how to do things to do it properly for him. And, and to penalize him for that, I think that's. All right. Um, and you're not the first person today, even. I've only got five of these on the agenda and, and that, that seems to be um, a common theme this morning. Let's I, I, I realize ignorance of the law is not an excuse, but uh, for, for these people that don't reside in the country, they, they really have no, no other way of uh, going except for hiring people local. No, I understand. I, I, um, this lien is at $32,700. The city's recommendation is it be reduced by no more than half, which is about 16 and change. Um, I'm going to reduce this to three thousand dollars. When how long it'll take you to pay that? Um, Thirty days will be fine. Thirty days. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And number four four one one five San Marino Boulevard two zero two C E one eight zero seven zero one five seven. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, Rafael Derujo here on behalf of Nacal LLC. Are you offering, should I place you under oath? I don't know if you're here in a capacity as legal counsel or as a I'm witness. counsel. Uh, I did submit an affidavit with the application, uh, but I can't, I'm yeah. happy to. If you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury, your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and back to the city. Case ending in 157, 4115 San Marino Boulevard, number 202, date order 103 of 18, fine started 112 of 18, 375 days, total is $75,000. Ran uh, $200 a day, date of compliance, 11, 12 of 19, same owner. Um, it should come as no surprise, this is for no rental license and the previous property manager is blamed on the application. The city is asking for 30%. All right, yes, sir. Your Honor, um, it does seem like this is a common theme this morning. Uh, this is a foreign investor. He is residing here now. He's been here for a few months, but he only learned about this um, Earlier in 2019, brought it to the property manager's uh, attention promptly. Uh, 
he discovered that there was a fine uh, when he got a letter from his lender. Uh, he was repeatedly assured by the property manager that it was being resolved, and it wasn't until uh, October, uh, about three or four months ago, where they ran a title search that the amount of the lien and the seriousness of the infraction became apparent. Um, like other cases, he's uh, invested in multiple properties in South Florida and depended on professionals to uh, handle these matters for him. As, as soon as he discovered this, he retained me to assist him and has been trying to resolve it. Okay. Uh, appreciate that. Anything else from the city? No, sir. All right. This is a, this lien accrued to $75,000. The city's recommendation is it be reduced to no more than $22,500, I think is 30%. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this based on what I've heard to $4,000. Can they pay that within 30 days? 30 days, Your Honor. All right, sold. Thank you. You can get the order up here and Unless I'm mistaken, that concludes our business for this yes. morning. I am uh, shocked beyond words, <laughs> given the size of the agenda, that we are uh, at 11.47 adjourned. Time warp involved or something. Can you stop talking? Okay. You apparently don't want to listen. I meant I should not be up there, and I asked you to wait a second, and you couldn't even do that much while we were doing that. You kept talking. What, what is it that I can help you with? I went up there to talk to my you know. You can't do that in the middle of the hearing. We're here for a purpose. Have you never been inside? You don't have to do that. Some of them are chronic.